how cheap can we build an end fed half wave? Can I save you 40 US dollars? I mean, that's a lot of money if you think about it. And I'm taking a look at the current prices of end fed half wave kits. And I'm gonna use their standard parts today as we go through and see, can we make a end fed half wave for under 30 US dollars when we see them on the markets from 70, 75, $80? I think we can, and today I'm gonna to take a look at some of the things that may cut corners as far as cost goes, so you can build that cheap and fed half wave and get out there really and just start building and experimenting an amateur radio. Let's get started right now on Ham Radio Dude. Uh, it's another end fed half wave video. <laughs> well, we're out there building things, aren't we? <laughs> So to get started, there are certain components that we need in an end fed half wave. And when those components by somebody who's manufacturing these kits for a sale are acquired, typically what they'll do is they'll package everything together in a nice end fed half wave kit and they'll charge you double the cost of what it is for the product for them. And that is the case every time it goes from one hand to another. So if this goes to me to another individual, I'm gonna charge him a price and then when he sells it, he's probably gonna double that price. And if we know how to source these parts, we might get ourselves a better deal. Let's take a look at a typical end fed half wave. And that's what we're going off today, a typical end fed half wave. I do encourage you to check out MM0OPX's Colin. I suggest that you go check out his charts and his YouTube video about the comparisons of different toroids because any of these parts that we're talking about today, you could swap out for anything that you think might be acceptable. And the key word here is testing, experimenting, and having fun. And that's three words. <laughs> when we're building an end fed half wave, we have to have a platform to build it on. I'm gonna choose a wire winder of some sort like this kite winder. And I recognize that this end fed half wave is not fully complete. But this wire winder or kite winder here is pretty cool because it allows me to eventually wrap my wire here or just hold this and good to go. Okay, plus furthermore, I can kind of put this into the ground if I needed to, even though it's not really a spike. And something like a kite winder right now on sale, for example, at a place like Elbertsons or Osco is somewhere around $4 US. Uh, furthermore, I've seen these at Goodwill from somewhere around $1.50 to $2. That's a really good deal for a platform to build on. And we could start getting creative because there is some spots on these NFED half wave wire winders. That's what they are now. They're NFED half wave wire winders. But there are spots on here so that we could drill out for our SO239 or our BNC or whatever we choose to use for a connector type. And we'll get there in just a moment. But there are other ways and things that we could do for wire winders. Now, I'm gonna assume that most of you don't have a 3D printer, but you could always 3D print your own wire winder. In fact, I saw a guy at a ham fest the other day selling these wire winders, and he was only selling them for $2, two US dollars. So I'm gonna say that the cheapest wire winder we found so far between these is probably gonna be two US dollars for either the kite winder or this. I will say he was selling the wire winders and he printed them in PLA, which is very susceptible to warping. PETG is a lot less susceptible to warping and ABS as well. But maybe you can't find yourself a kite winder. Maybe you can't find yourself a wire winder. Maybe you could find yourself a cutting board. And it used to be you can go to a Dollar Tree and get these for a dollar plus tax. Now the price would be $1.25, but you can't find them. Again, if you go to Goodwill, you might actually find a new cutting board for $1.50. Yeah, inflation's a pain. But those are just a few things that you might use for a wire winder. And if you're good with cutting or have like a jigsaw, you could probably cut this out into any shape you choose. And furthermore, if you don't have any of that, maybe you find yourself an old two by four or a piece of plywood. That might be something that would work for a winder. Platform we could build our antenna on. Our next main component is gonna be a toroid, okay? And there is a, a large amount of toroids you could use out there. We're gonna go with the typical toroid that you would see in a kit, which would be a T140-43 toroid. Whether people rate them at 60 watts max or 100 watts max, the T140-43 toroid that a lot of them are using. I'm gonna link below Colin's video. Again, MM, MM0OPX. God, I hope I got that right, Colin. But 
he in depth goes into comparing certain NFET half waves and even talks about uh, a larger toroid that you might even see in a kit like the K6ARK kit. To find the cheapest T140-43 toroid, I went on to like digikey.com and they were $2.49 each or something right around there. Great deal. I added to the cart and by the time I get to shipping and taxes, the toroid alone was about $10, $9.85. It's too much money for me. So I went over to Amazon and I said, is there a T140-43 toroid that would be cheaper than $9.43? And I actually found two, one for $6.95, which might be delivered between May 19th or May 25th or next year. But uh, for just a couple of cents more, I found a T140-43 toroid with good reviews for $7.35. It would be here tomorrow and it includes free shipping. So we're gonna assume that that's the one and 735 plus two bucks, we're up to a whopping $9.35. What is it that you notice about that toroid though? It, it's wrapped in some kind of wire and that's magnet wire that's on here. So we're gonna go with magnet wire today. Although I've seen people use like an 18 gauge piece of wire, we're gonna go with like a 20 gauge magnet wire. This one's a little thicker. And again, I'm gonna say that, hey, check Goodwill because this was a store called Savers and it was labeled Drop Sensor Prototype. And I had a look inside and I got all the wire in the world. Those weren't in there. I got cool little radio wires. Uh, I got all kinds of wire here including magnet wire. Huh, 22 gauge, okay, cool. But I paid a whopping $9.99 for this box full of wire. If you could find a box of assorted wire that you could use for your antenna wire as well, as well as maybe magnet wire for $9.99, that's a no brainer, but not everybody's gonna have that opportunity. So again, we look online and we find magnet wire. Now, uh, I will tell you that a lot of the NFED half-wave kits out there are using BN Tech Go magnet wire. And a spool of that on something like Amazon.com would be about $11.45. After calculating the price of shipping for most of these companies and online stores, I couldn't find a price cheaper than the BN Tech Go 28WG for $11.49 or 45 cents each, which then if we add that to the cart, will bring our total to $20.80 for this end fed half wave so far. I will mention that if you think about it and you go in with a group of people, you could probably do this kit even cheaper than we're talking about today because you could split the cost of that large spool of magnet wire between five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 people. And I do recognize that this next one, maybe you have one laying around your house, but we need either like an SO239 or a BNC connector. I use this one right here and I had it laying around the house, but again, we need to find one for you. So let me go see if I can't find either an inexpensive BNC connector or SO239 connector. While looking for uh, the inexpensive SL239 connector, I did find this website. It's called showmecables.com. I don't know anything about them, but I did find what looked to be very decent quality connectors for a total of $3.73 plus shipping at $3.99, $7.95. You could, however, go over to Amazon and get some other bulkhead SL239 connectors, a four pack for $8.90 with free shipping. And that becomes kind of iffy because they're not the best quality connectors in the world. But I've then again, probably not had so many problems with them that I wouldn't not recommend them. So for the case of this, I'm gonna say that again, $8.90 is cheaper than one connector. We're gonna buy that four pack and you could always, again, split it up between people that you know. I wanted to mention real quick that there's probably even cheaper, more economic way to do this. And that's to ditch the SL239 and BNC connector altogether. I know you're thinking, what, how? Well, you can get yourself a piece of coax. Now, I'm not gonna recommend a good quality piece of coax like this, uh, and I'm not gonna cut this. But for example, if you had a piece of old like RG58, maybe you cut a little bit off of it, just a little bit, right? Because the losses aren't gonna be great when you're only using six inches of cable. 
you cut it off and then you have two cables on there. You have the braided outer shield, which is typically your counterpoise wire. And you have your inner solid strain, which is typically your center conductor or goes to the antenna. And then basically what you could do is you have an NFED half wave that could screw directly in the back of your radio. And that was probably free. And you probably even find that RG58 at Goodwill. So that brings our total to a whopping $8, $29.70. So we're actually hitting that point of not being as cheap as I hoped. I wanted to get this NFED half-wave under $25 for a single individual. Unfortunately, you know, when you have to buy things in bulk, it raises the price. But then again, I guess you could build like four NFED half-waves and be cool, be cool. You can build a random wire. You could build different transformers, like a 49 to 1, 64 to 1, or 56 to 1. Uh, you could try a 6 to 1 un, -un. You could uh, You could build a friend a nice birthday present. So we got the wire winder. We got the toroid. We got the magnet wire. We have our SO239 bulkhead connector. In between them, and you don't see it quite yet, you're going to need a capacitor, typically a 100 PF capacitor. I see a lot of those guys using the three kilovolt capacitors. And let's jump online and see how much we can get one of those for or what the cheapest one is. I also do want to mention I didn't take into consideration and I made an assumption that you're probably going to have a solder soldering iron. And if you don't have a soldering iron, maybe you can go to a local club or somebody in your area who could even help you out. Like, hey, here's a soldering iron. And a lot of times, maybe some of the people at these clubs will have some of these things like magnet wire. So you could reduce the cost of that. I found a 20 pack of 100 PF, three kilovolt capacitors on amazon.com for a total of $4.99. I'll go ahead and I'll link that below. And that's going to bring our total to $34.69. We're already getting down to the last components that we would need for our end fed half wave. And yeah, it's the wire. There's a large assortment of wire out there and people typically will ask me like, hey, is 30 gauge too small for a T140-43 toroid? No, I think you'll be completely fine. Uh, this wire here, if you could see, it has no memory to it. And a lot of people like to use this BN Tech Go silicone wire. Now this is like 24 gauge. So that would probably, well, let's see how much it would run us. I forgot to mention that we're gonna need about 100 feet of wire. If we're making a 40 meter end fed half wave, which is what we typically see in those kits. Yeah, you have about around, roughly around 65 feet of wire. Plus uh, we're gonna call it 20 feet of counterpoise, 65 and 20 is 85. And we have an extra 15 feet for good luck. Okay, so here is Bienteco 20 gauge, 100 foot silicone wire. And we're gonna go with that. The cheapest I could find on Amazon was about $13.98, which seems really high. Of course, we can get the price down to 100 feet of 26 gauge silicone wire with stranded tin copper for $11.28 on Amazon. Now, I'm gonna just reiterate the fact that I'm helping you build the cheapest NFED half wave and I'm helping you find prices, but as I'm also helping you do, and I've mentioned many times, check your local Goodwill, your local thrift stores. I think there's a store out here called Restore as well. Because like I mentioned again, you can find rolls like this, but also I found speaker wire and I found well over 250 feet of speaker wire, which is pretty thick stuff. But hey, if maybe that's what you want and you're trying to save money, it would work just fine. Now, uh, so we're going to go though with the $11.28 silicone wire, which puts us at a total of $45.97 for this end fed half wave kit. Now, I know that you think right now is, well, that's $46. It's not that much of a savings, but you didn't actually just build one end fed half wave. If you think about it, you've actually not only built an end fed half wave, but you've got enough parts on there to build probably three more minus the wire. And realistically, all those kits that we see out there are typically the same. They all include a winding, which is usually a 49 to one. So there's a lot of videos out there on how to wrap your own toroid. There's a lot of videos out there on where to place the capacitor in line. And I'm aware there's no capacitor here. 
um, nor is it actually completely soldered yet. All the videos and the instructions will help you get to where you need to go to have an NFED half wave that will do exactly the same thing as the kits. The reason I tell you this is uh, you could save money for $24. I believe you can get this down to $24 in NFED half wave. And I believe even more that this will help you further your pursuit of knowledge in amateur radio and logistics and saving money. I just believe it's fun. Hopefully these thoughts, these suggestions, these random... Oh, I'm sorry. I was, uh, uh, my phone must have dialed 911 when I was recording. Yeah, yeah, is this Not much, man. I'm sorry, dude. You know, that's like the, that's like the third time it's happened with this phone. I gotta get a new phone. <laughs> I hope you are well, and I apologize. <laughs> Take care, man. <laughs> my phone just dialed 911. Oh, where was I now? I think that was the end of the episode. You know you could build a cheap NFED half wave. You know you could save money while the pursuit of knowledge is there. So let's pose a question to you, the viewer, and the experienced Elmer. What do you do to cut corners when building a NFED half wave or similar antenna? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, this is Ham Radio Dude. I hope this episode helped you. 73.